light speed is done. Um, our big differentiator is the technology we're building upon is uh, a little bit different. Uh, we're real time across every location. Um, and we also work across multiple locations cohesively. Um, a lot of these systems out there currently don't work well across multiple locations. They are kind of treat them as silo uh, islands where it's hard to get your data to work well, well across multiple locations. So to get meaningful data, sometimes you have to wait till 12 p.m. at night when the uh, wrong task runs, or you know, your uh, reconciliation process tells you how you did across your entire infrastructure. Where we differ is we do that in real time on the fly. Um, so it's kind of a, a big difference that we hope to capitalize on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just jump into my history and why I think that we can do this. Um, and so I've been programming and interested in technology for a long, long time. Uh, I started off when I was um, 12 years old with the basic programming language, and uh, my dad actually taught me. He was utilizing the language to build an accounting program for his business, Verdict and Verdict, at the time. And uh, I kind of used that opportunity to piggyback off that and get him to show me how to do some basic things in programming. And uh, made some text-based RPGs, kind of nerdy video game things. And uh, did that for fun. And uh, also at St. Clements, where I went to middle school, had uh, access to a computer lab, which was really instrumental in uh, giving me the assets I needed to explore computers. So in high school at Coronado, went into a web design uh, class, and there I kind of got my first exposure to uh, modern web programming, and uh, fell in love and kind of just kept doing it as a hobby after uh, that class and board. Didn't really realize it was something I could monetize for a long time. I thought it was just a fun you know, gimmick, uh, something to do in my spare time. So went to college, did political science and uh, history and my uh, history minor, and uh, was in my senior year and realized that I had missed my opportunity to work with computers, my true love. So I decided to go back and start over in computer uh, business information systems. And uh, so I did a semester into that, um, just starting afresh from new, and realized how long it was going to take me, and found that timeline kind of unacceptable. So I dropped out and uh, started my own web design company that I ran for about two years called Website Scenes. And uh, was moderately successful. I maybe had our 20, 25 clients at my feet. And uh, it was pretty, uh, it was my first stab, I guess, startups. And uh, left that to focus on a career. I wanted to see what I could do in my professional career. Um, now that I had some experience under my belt doing website scenes, and uh, went to work for a few other web design startups, uh, probably the most notable, uh, Vivo Impulse Creative Co., who's done a lot of great local work and uh, regional work. And uh, after them, I left and started working for uh, Rista Networks, most recently out of Silicon Valley. And there, I was able to work with the EOS Plus team, uh, doing DevOps deployments, uh, customer integrations, and some really cool customized work with big data. And some of that experience is I'm trying to look, or looking at bringing down the level to smaller businesses that I think could you know, benefit from that as well. So why would I leave Arista? You know, some, a company that has great benefits, stock options, 401k, you know, a snack wall with anything you want, Red Bulls, uh, Gatorades, and uh, it just, it's going all in. It's this concept of just, doing what you believe in and regardless of you know funding or uh, any outside support, just believing that you can do it. And so I'm using some of uh, my savings and stock options and 401k <coughs> from Arista to bootstrap our business. So we're completely self-funded at this point. Um, and that's kind of you know just part of this concept of going all in. Uh, just leave, living, breathing startup culture. We joined the hub of human innovation as affiliates, we every we meet every Monday for a stand-up meeting to kind of plan our week, and it helped us with our business strategy quite a bit. Um, we also frequent co-work Oasis, and uh, you know network with a lot of uh, great people there. And uh, so basically, you know, creating strategic partnerships is also a big part of going all in. Uh, or my partner Chris Rueda, who is uh, presenting next, uh, he is the principal attorney. Penny Farthing Design, and uh, he's created a lot of really cool El Paso uh, centered designs on, that he's printed out on uh, some materials that we're going to be selling online, and we're utilizing Singulution uh, to do that. So we're going to kind of be cross-promoting Penny Farthing and Singulution with uh, 
this initial online store offering. So the online store for Penny Farling will be utilizing uh, our e-commerce solution and a website builder. Um, so while Paso, you know, I think of this is, is kind of easy. You know, you just look around today, we have a lot of people <coughs> that are interested in seeing startups succeed in El Paso. You know, timing is, is really on our side right now. I think, uh, you know, with a lot of uh, recent investments in downtown, revitalization, uh, you know, places like Hub, Human Innovation, Cowork Oasis opening up, um, it's just a great time for startups. Um, you know, we have a, a great regional position here being on the border. Um, we have talent not only locally and from the U.S., but from uh, internationally, from Juarez, and there's a lot of great people that come here to go to school at UTEC, and uh, you know, it'd be great to be able to give them a job. Um, so, a lot of international events also happening, like Campus Link, uh, Reset, that happen on both sides of the border, and they have like hackathons, tech talks, and uh, these are kind of relative, relative uh, developments in El Paso. Um, there's a lot of people talking about tech and uh, both the health sector and uh, also in other uh, industries. So I mean, basically, what we envision for El Paso is Singulution and companies like Singulution thriving here. You know, I think that there's a great opportunity to build a pipeline for talent from our universities in the region into uh, companies with the right support. You know, we, we really have the opportunity to be a collaborative uh, borderland tech hub. Um, all, the, all the right pieces are here, and uh, there's just growing support, and uh, I think that tech can really serve as a funnel for wealth into our region. And uh, these are products we can offer outside of our customers. And uh, basically, that's it. Uh, I don't know if I'm going super fast or slow, but I can tell. So I'm going to come over for questions. So, can you give me a good kind of breakdown of what you should have? Consultants, what sort of services? So it's a point of sale, e-commerce, and website functionality. So um, if you haven't heard of Shopify, really what it is, is uh, it's a solution to be able to offer your products online and in-store from one system, and uh, without having to have redundancies uh, across those systems or having to have some sort of reconciliation process afterwards. So. Think about like Square or Wix or you can combine those things basically and uh, you have some illusion. And our main differentiation is our technology. Um, our technology is a little bit more advanced. We're using the same thing that we're using in our risk of networks to manage data centers to build our infrastructure out. So this is uh, uh, some of the same concepts we're, that are utilized in DevOps environments that we're using with uh, Simulution. What about some of the future tech applications of the so, like as far as other applications we can use it for? Yeah, the bigger picture goals is the long haul of what we're working on. So, that's a good point. I didn't talk about, you know, the future tech of what we're really doing. Um, we're really building the infrastructure for artificial intelligence and predictive analytics. And that's, I say that because of the way that we're designing our data layer. Um, we're designing it in the same way that people that utilize big data do. Um, we have these real-time connections between all of our open terminals, the website, and e-commerce store. So anytime an action happens on one location, it's instantly reflected on another location and recorded in the ledger across the board. Um, it's kind of a, a similar to distributed computing. It um, doesn't utilize blockchain per se, but uh, kind of similar to those concepts. So, yeah. Uh, back in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm going to be participating in a hackathon here at uh, the Reset event that's coming up, and uh, we're going to be participating in the blockchain category, and we're going to be developing a voting system on blockchain. But you know, as far as applying it to our system, I think that there is applications. Um, one would be like some of the more sensitive areas of information. Maybe it could be uh, corroborated, you know, in the blockchain. Like maybe we have a, a truth where we have every action that is recorded on the, the website that happens, well that could be stored in the blockchain so it can be altered. So somebody can't go delete an item and then you know erase any track of that. I think that an application like that could uh, definitely be yeah. To eliminate fraud, basically. Uh, so I'm probably not the only one in here. What is blockchain? I mean, you're talking in sure. terminology that you're comfortable with, but there's probably more than just me in here that doesn't understand something. That's a great point. For us to be able to, 
maybe give you feedback or ask better questions, you need to understand what you're actually talking about. Yeah, that's a great point. And that's one of the things that I am working on, is trying to find uh, the verbiage and you know the way to communicate my ideas a little bit better. Because sometimes I forget that not everyone is a hard worker. You know, you know, I mean, I want to talk about like you know all the things that excite me, and sometimes, yeah, it just doesn't translate. You know, and so I totally understand what you're saying. But uh, blockchain uh, is basically a distributed ledger. And in that ledger, you keep track of conceptual value. And in terms that we probably have heard of, that's Bitcoin. Uh, it's the mechanism behind Bitcoin that allows you to track who has what Bitcoin amount. And um, basically, you have a public key that everyone can see, and you have, and then a private key that allows you to access that key. And I don't know if that's getting confusing, but it's a, a it's basically using cryptography to assure that you own that wallet. And a wallet is basically part of uh, the blockchain where your resources or your conceptual value is stored. It's your account. Your account. And so blockchain, the way, reason they call it a chain is because it's a chain of transactions that can't be broken retrospectively. And if it is altered retrospectively, then the chain is broken and we know that the fraud has occurred. And so it's a... a not necessarily a mechanism to prevent fraud, but it's a mechanism to retrospectively catch it. So, so who's your target audience? Who's your client? So our target audience kind of falls in between like the do-it-yourself small businesses and like the like Shopify, Wix, and the higher end ERPs. Like a lot of the ERP systems are gonna have a to So an enterprise resource planning system. And a lot of those systems do have functionality similar to what we're talking about, but they traditionally rely on local area networks that have hardware and various other overheads. You need like a virtual private network that you need to sign into and a lot of uh, uh, other interesting uh, workarounds. And um, so our target audience it falls in between those two crowds, basically. Because ERPs, you basically have $500,000 buy-in and up. And then you have maintenance costs, where our system is significantly lower, but significantly more powerful than like the lower end. So we're trying to hit like the crazy cats that maybe have three locations in their house and online store, or maybe uh, you know somebody of similar scale. And then we'd like to eventually work into uh, the higher end ERP market that uh, you know is a little bit more difficult because it deals cycles of maybe you know a year or two. You know sometimes uh, those businesses can be difficult. Yeah. Uh, you've been raising your hand. I kind of have two questions because the way you explain the technology yeah. is uh, is different than Square. Where Square, you can use it, for example, if you're using WooCommerce or other e-commerce technology to host a, a developed website. Yes. Right. Square works into all that. So you can have it in, in your restaurant or in your bakery or in your retail store or in your warehouse, and it can also be tracked into your online sales, right? Sure. And so how is that different than yours? Is yours like in its own server? And, and how, are, I mean, how are you looking at competing? So with it's, it's the base technology, and that's a great example. So in, in your example, you have a customer that's using best of breed, which is kind of a mentality that is uh, pervasive today. You know, you want to use the best website builder. You want to use the best e-commerce, the best point of sale. And they usually integrate together. Right. And that is cool. But I'm thinking that that's also leading to a little bit of overhead and a little bit of interface password fatigue. Because um, those systems are going to reconcile your data retrospectively after the fact. You know, none of those systems that integrate that way are going to be able to do it in a real time nature. Where we're able to reflect across our entire infrastructure, the online store, every single open terminal, and the website any action that happens across the board instantaneously, whether it's across the country or next door. Can I host my own website, host it in my own domain, in my own hosting, or do I have to be in your server? Do I have so to like, that, log into your system? It would have to be, it's all a control system, yeah. You have to log into my system. We don't have a lot of integrations yet, and it's kind of purposeful. Um, we think that combining these ways in a single point, or these uh, systems into a single point of truth really provides uh, the data layer that's going to be the most powerful for uh, businesses that have a lot of these distributed resources. Would it be under my own domain? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, so we're doing a little something different this morning because of the unique nature of their businesses. We're going to cut this Q&A a little bit short, but we're going to add that time at the end 
after Chris is presented and have them both up here for the rest of the Q&A. But for right now, what can we as a community do to help you? I mean, just support local startups of any kind, of any type. Um, I'd love to see you know you guys using people that are out there trying to do something, their products, uh, giving feedback, and you know trying to promote them. So. Okay, great. You get a travel mug, <laughs> and then we have to take a picture. And again, you will you'll come back once we have Chris and have both of you. All right. If you're in the, par in the side, the, that angle parking closest to Durango, you only have an hour. And again, they'll give you a love note. Uh, if you're, there's half of it closest to the Paisano curve, then you're fine. Lastly, do not, please do not park in any of the two parking lots that are off of Durango. Those are both reserved lots, and again, they'll tell you, so I, I would be glad to do that. Uh, and now I'll bring up Serena Harper, who's going to read us some community announcements. Good morning again. Good morning. Um, <coughs> Anybody hiring anybody? Anybody looking to raise money? Want to announce if they raise money? Anything at all from the community? Yes. It's not my announcement, but there is an effort on the part of Microsoft to open up a basically a startup operation on Paso. And they're looking for a tech owner, someone who can come in who can really sort of get them engaged in the community as a company, but also someone who has the ability to open doors and, and get executives on the phone locally to introduce themselves. And so that position is open by Microsoft. I can send it over to Ernesto. Okay. He can distribute it. That would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we all, yes. Also, I would like to remind you to know that we have a philosophical cafe on Thursday at 5.30 by the um, Kinley, Kinley's uh, um, team. Tea, it's the tea uh, shop that, that is by the EGCU at, at 5 30, from 5 30 to 7. And we just uh, think and talk about interesting things uh, related to philosophy or startups. So you are all invited. It's free to attend. Thank you. When is this again? Tomorrow? Thursdays at 5 30. Every Thursday at 5 30? Every Thursday. <laughs> also, tomorrow evening um, is Cocktails with Friends, 5 30 or 5 to 7, over at the Alamo Draft House. Um, tomorrow morning is Breakfast with Friends, over at Carnitas by the Fountains, and that is from 8 30 sharp until 10. Um, November 9th. The Hub and UTEP are pairing together for um, networking for a 1 million cups there. And that will be at 4.30 at the Coba 309 building in UTEP, at UTEP. Uh, Shop Local Holiday Market being hosted by the Tea Spout on November 11th, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. If you can make it over there and support that effort. And in New Mexico, Las Cruces, New Mexico Watercolor Society, the New Mexico Watercolor Society Southern Chapter invites the public to a special program pertaining to legal issues in the world of art. And that is November 12th at 3 p.m. over in Las Cruces. Trinity Health Coaching has a seminar, What If Your Blood Could Talk? This seminar is for you if you're tired of using medications to deal with symptoms of disease, you're struggling to figure out why you can't get rid of that belly fat, you want to take a more proactive approach to your health, and you want to enjoy a better quality of life. So if you're interested in that, that is this Saturday, November 11th, from 2.30 to 4.45. Um, tickets are $20, but a 50% off promo code is available if you call or text Bob. Bob, could you raise your hand, please, so everyone knows where you're at? So if you're interested in that, it sounds like a great um, investment of money and time. See Bob for that. Um, next Wednesday, 5 to 7, the 15th, November 15th, right here at the Hub, we will be having Action, action Surge presenting. Um, Steve Gargulio will be here taking your idea into action. 
So if you all were here a few, several weeks ago, he presented for the company. Um, he has a lot of energy, a lot of good ideas, so if you're interested, please join us next Wednesday evening, 5 to 7, um, at the Hub. So we will see you then. Uh, Green Carpet Day. Join us for Career Day. Learn from our top executives how to successfully start a career in financial industry services. That is being hosted on November 11th at the Embassy Suites, 9.30 a.m. That is a Saturday. Reset. That is being held. Reset is where innovation and technology come together. It's a bi-national event designed to inspire young minds. So that is being held on the 15th in Juarez and the 16th in El Paso. So if you are interested in that, um, you can get more information. Uh, this file will be in the back after. And the Hub has legal hours, November 16th, 3 to 5, must make an appointment. Only three slots, sleep, excuse me, only three slots are left. So if you are interested in getting some kind of legal advice or assistance, uh, see us about that. Friday, November 17th, is the State Hub Processing Day at, El Paso, at the El Paso Hispanic Chamber of Commerce over on Missouri. That is for the historically underutilized businesses, the hub. Um, on November 22nd, which is the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, here at One Million Cups, we will be having a One Million Cups Mixer networking event in lieu of our typical presentations. So please still join us um, for coffee and networking on Wednesday morning before Thanksgiving. November 29th, the City of El Paso 2017 Cooperative Purchasing Expo. And for more information on registration and such, please see me. Mass, Mass Challenge Texas, Small Startups, Big Impact. Meet Mass Challenge Texas at the Hub, of Human Inter at the Hub for Human Innovation. That is December 1st, 12 p.m., 12 to 2, here at the Hub. And we are also hosting a holiday open house on Thursday, December 14th, 4.30 to 7.30, here at the Hub, so please join us for that. Patent and Trademark Seminars. That will be held on Thursday, January 18th. We're already into the new year. Um, 8.30 to 4. So that will be held at EPCC on my count. And... Nobody else has anything they'd like to add? That's it for this morning. Okay, thank you, Serena. Thank you. Um, a couple more announcements, very important. Somebody who's driving a Mercedes, apparently, and has an interesting kitty cat key. Yeah, that's mine. That's mine. Kitty that's cat mine. key, I should have figured mine. that, yeah. That's fine. So if you, if this is, these are yours, nobody's reacting really like it's theirs, so I'll give it back to the security guard. I uh, want to talk a little bit more about the Mass Challenge Texas, although Serena mentioned it. Mass Challenge Texas is an accelerator. It's a statewide accelerator. So if you or anybody you know of has a company that can be accelerated, that just basically means it accelerates their growth and you qualify. They get all kinds of awesome mentoring help. There's cash prizes. They don't take any equity. It's really a fantastic program. And again, you'll be connected throughout the state of Texas. One of the key organizers is from El Paso. So we have an inside track with them. So please, please think about that. Come to the event and tell anybody who you think may be a good candidate for Mass Challenge. Uh, they have a website. All the information is on there. Or anybody here at the Hub or one of the other cups can talk to you about it. So please do that. Um, lastly, I want to shout out again to our coffee sponsor, Transcard Systems. Uh, Mr. Rusty Gibbs, if anybody wants to talk to him about his business, and I want to thank him for his sponsorship. That'd be great. We are looking for ongoing coffee sponsors as well. Um, we've had in the past, as you know, Krispy Kreme and uh, Pickup.Coffee that did three month stints, or we'd even do one at a time, $25 to sponsor the coffee for one particular event, so we are looking for that. So, lastly, all these events, there's a whole lot of events, right? If you go to Startup Digest El Paso, go to Startup Digest El Paso, you'll get all these events, and you'll be able to read about them at your leisure. And then Art has something in the back. Will we have to change our name to Empty Cups? <laughs> yes, or, 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 we may, or we may go out for a tea sponsor or something like that, I'm not sure, but yes, okay, now I'll bring up our second presenter, Penny Farley Design.
So this is actually a presentation I did a few weeks back on a program called Pecha Kucha. It was 20 slides in 20 seconds, but it was convenient because it tells a bit about my own story. Is it really pronounced? So there's a, I grew up with on phonics. I say Pecha Kucha. Others may disagree, but we'll get into that another day. That's so anyway, I did about my own story. It's convenient that Huck just got a chance to talk about his own and about how him and I have become co-founders of another business, and you'll learn a bit more about it as I go on. So this, this is me, one man band, my journey so far. So I'm Chris Rutha, I'm a lifelong El Pasoan, born and raised here and have lived here my whole life, with the exception of going to school for a little while. So keep moving. So I always wanted to be a creative. Growing up, I could always draw and paint well and was building stuff with Legos. And as that kind of went on, I went to school, I got a degree in architecture and then I pursued an MBA. And then during grad school, I had some friends who asked me for some logo designs. So some logos and posters and a few other graphical projects. So started doing a bit of freelancing as a graphic designer uh, during grad school. And of course, as grad school uh, finished up and building off of my uh, freelance portfolio as a graphic designer, I started my job hunt. So I was writing things down, writing things down in notebooks when I first started out, all the places that I applied to, the positions, the cities, so on and so forth, and stopped writing things down at about 311. So that was kind of grew after the fact that I got a bit a bit dismayed, you know, the job funding process was not going well for me. I think I applied something like 37 out of the 50 states in this beautiful country of ours. So, uh, so yeah, certainly I was trying. So no luck, right? Got my luck, you know. Nothing was really panning out for me, and there was pros and cons to the job funding process. I'm standing in a room full of people. I'm sure each one of you has your own stories from times when you've had to find another gig. And so yeah, it's nothing unique to me, and. So a lot of what I started to do was an opportunity for introspection, really examining, you know, examining, making sure this is what I want to do, and then you got a chance to learn a lot too. You apply to many places I did, you get a pretty good cross section of the caliber of design throughout this country, and I kind of got an idea of who I would like to be, what I, who I'd like to work for, and it really it was it was a learning process. So, so what did I do next? Time to hit the reset button. Things were not panning out, but like again, those challenges are certainly not unique to me, and. Uh, started really kind of looking in the mirror, thinking about what I could do, what could I change to better position myself for the next opportunity or any opportunity for that matter. And so really started considering a couple things and tidying up my portfolio, making sure my resume was, any, if it, was if it could be tighter, I tried to improve it, and then, yeah, just really looking in the mirror. So this is actually a quote from a, well, it's in a book I read by a guy named Jack Reed. I don't know if he coined the term, but I, was, I say to myself quite a bit, Find ways to win, not excuses for losing. So this was kind of like my Zen moment. It was kind of a new energy and a new focus, kind of coming off of that that lull of a, of a job hunting process, and really started to kind of refocus my thoughts. What else can I do to improve my circumstances? Certainly applied for a few more jobs, and I did. And, but also considering, well, what else is out there? I I was certainly down on my luck, but I didn't feel out of my league. I thought that, yeah, I'm not getting the job, but I didn't view that as an indictment on me as a designer. Like I was a pretty capable person, and finding the right position, I think I could, I could thrive. So I started considering, well, what if I start a business? That's something I, could, I could, something I could pursue. And I have an MBA, but to be honest, the creative business is a completely different animal. There's nuances to what I do that just don't exist in other industries. So I did tons of homework. Yeah, I had a business degree, as I said, but I built on that knowledge by reading all sorts of business books, but specific to the creative industry, uh, pricing manuals, ethical guidelines, just better, you know, just trying to make sure I can build myself into the kind of professional, if I do kind of pursue this, this business avenue, making sure I conduct myself appropriately, making sure I'm covering all, all, all the bases, learning everything I can so I can enter situations with clients with a variety of sophistications to be able to handle myself accordingly. So tons of homework and then of course still some freelancing as I'm going along. And that was another thing. Well, I'm freelancing, I'm getting a chance to do a lot of work for business owners, doing all sorts of things and all sorts of industries. So I started to really pay more attention not just to what they did specifically, but viewing them as examples of folks, you know, chasing their own dreams, pursuing their own roles, and it didn't really matter what they did or how successful they were or weren't. You know, it was, they were examples of folks dealing with the same sorts of challenges that myself and many others who own any sort of business do. So yeah, I was just really paying attention, and yeah, it was inspiring. Just really looking around and see, hey, they're doing it too. Not that it's easy for me, but why not? So, but how do I do it? That was the next thing is, okay, fair enough, I did a ton of homework, been, been paying attention, but I needed to really zero in my search, really zero in on folks who are closer to my own circumstances. So I looked at designers, you know, solo designers, so men and women all over the country who were doing something closer to what I was doing, you know, focusing on my strengths and not even the weaknesses. Because there's bigger firms, but to be honest with you, 
In the creative industry, bigger isn't always better. But oftentimes, the bigger you are, the less important you are depending on the size of your budget. So that's something that I really started to really figure out, okay, how can I market myself as an individual designer and build a business as that? So I thought of a name, form a business. And to be honest, the logo kind of forced the name. My last name, Rutherda, means wheel. So I came up with a penny farthing logo when I had my portfolio website, ChristopherRutherda.com. And as I got time to, to form my business, fortunately, that I have always liked, this is a penny farthing bicycle. So penny farthing design kind of worked out. And I left it a design on purpose because my degrees in architecture, to be honest, I, there's one more dimension to my design abilities that I, I think I would like to save room for. So yeah, formed a business and went downtown, yeah, formed all the appropriate paperwork and cover what you wish for. So yeah, reality sets in, okay, and now I have a business, very cool. But now I'm not being, a lot of the challenges really set in, some not, 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 I mean, I certainly saw them coming and you, you, you read about it, you know what you ought to do. But in addition to both continuing, getting, make, making sure that business continues to crank in, but also I got to I gotta play many roles, play, wear many hats. I'm the, I'm the creative director, the graphic designer, the account executive, the errand boy, the debt collector, the accountant. Um, and it's something that it was, it, and I, I'm writing contracts, some much lengthier than others. And so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm having to play a lot of roles and have to learn very quick, especially as I'm, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to have a misstep of a potential important client. So it's always making sure that I'm put my best foot forward. So yeah, it was, it was a lot, you know, certainly trying to keep my head above water when I first started. And my next end moment, running a business is difficult and that's okay. So I started really to embrace the ambiguity and the complexity of every day-to-day -day situation, every project, every client. And you know, every day is an exercise in tact and diplomacy when it comes to how I deal with other projects, clients, some clients who have business partners, so there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen sometimes. And uh, so yeah, I really just started to, you know, what, some of the things that were initially kind of difficult, I started to really embrace. I started, it was really fun. If anything, the creative stuff is what comes more naturally to me. Not that it's easy, but it's something that I'm able to kind of zero in on and focus on. But yeah, I, mean, I like people. I like dealing with people. I like talking to folks. I like coming to an arrangement. Sometimes it doesn't work out, but it's always the process, the interaction is something that's always been energizing for me. So building my network, both professionally and uh, personally. <coughs> Part of building a business is making friends. So I started to do what I could, do what I can, get myself out there. Um, I'm a member of the AIGA, the American Institute of Graphic Arts, their local El Paso chapter. I joined the uh, Chamber of Commerce here in El Paso. Um, I get to speak at events like this in front of you fine folks. So members of the Hub of Human, Human Innovation, as well as associate, well, part-time members of the co-work oasis, but one minute, wow, okay. So making friends, building my network professionally, it's good for business. So you need, you need bigger business, right? So you need bigger companies, you need bigger projects. So I didn't have a ton, of, a ton of commercial work that I could give the bigger guys. So no confidence, try courage. So to be set up a lot in life. So I just went in there, all I can do is ask, all I can say is no. Standing my ground, a parallel fight I've got on a regular basis where getting the public to value design work and creativity the same way they do with other products and services. It's a daily battle, it's a conversation I have with every client and for better or worse, it doesn't always work out. I do a lot of work, a lot of logo design, we talk about my work, some of the stuff you guys may have seen, some stuff you haven't, some of it you'll see in a variety of versions as we launch the online store for Penny Farthing with Simulation. I love El Paso, another one of my work, here's a streetcar edition, you haven't seen that one yet. But yeah, I love this city, I'm inspired by this city, a lot of my work is directly influenced by this city, and same reason why, as I continue to grow, try new things, Simulation with my partner Hunt over here. A tech startup in town, you know, a software engineer, designer, collabo, and there's a lot of overlap from what we do and a lot of stuff that we can really do to leverage each other's expertise and looking forward to it. As I mentioned, launching Penny Bottom Design, Small Batch Goods is the online store we're coming soon, so a lot of, a lot of print design, um, I, have, I do a lot of graphical work obviously, so a lot of, a lot of print designs, posters, uh, caps, really been everything. A lot of folks who like my work but don't always need a logo design, but they would totally buy a really pretty t-shirt. So support local design and local businesses, local creativity. That's something that I think El Paso has a wealth of talent. And a lot of times it's surprising when folks look elsewhere for what could otherwise be done better here. So with that, I don't know if there's any time for questions. I kind of went on a bit, but. Yes, we're going to give you some time, just you, and then we want Hunt and you both together to talk about the merging. Awesome. So questions, please. Oh, yes, sir. So how do you use Facebook to 
to get business. I don't use Facebook at all to get business. I use Instagram. Um, a lot of what I do is graphical work, and Instagram lends itself particularly to what I do. So a lot of, in addition to projects I get through a variety of avenues, especially previous clients who will refer me along the way, but Facebook, I'm going to add a Facebook page, but just for me anyway, I mean, direct messaging on Instagram has been particularly useful for me given... Well, then how do you use Instagram? Um, well, if you talk, follow Penny Folly Design on Instagram, you'll notice I have a variety of work that you get a chance to showcase today. But what I do is identify clients, especially locally, so I can work with local business owners. There's something that I think I can help them out with. I, I message them directly and just mention how I admire what they're doing over there. Here's what I'm doing over here. It'd be great to work together. And if there's something I can actually mention specifically, like, hey, I saw you're always making invitations. You know, I mentioned how there's ways that we could work together and improve on that for their next clients. Talk about the way how we can work together. We're good for each other. You can, I'll design you better invitations and you'll have happier customers because you're selling them better invitations. So, I don't know, is that kind of, I mean, it's really, it, it, kind of case by case, every client's different, but yeah, just say hello and we see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Yes? What is your biggest challenge? Pricing is the biggest thing. I think that's something that, I have a lot of folks that, especially in the internet phase, will all go online, spend five bucks on the logo, and and will and will will preach to you that it's a one for one comparison. But it's not. Every business is different. Every business is a personal story. There's no nuance or any any, any sort of any, any sort of personality that could otherwise be in, in, in employed. If you hire a designer, they're going to talk to you. Like you, when I design for anybody, we sit down, we have a long conversation. Sometimes I provide them with a brand identity questionnaire, which for me right now is 12 questions, and each question beneath it has explains why I asked the question, so you understand the logic behind it, so you don't just answer it, but understand why it's important. But a lot of that is, it's not going to be homework, but it's conversation. You get to know each other. We should, we should be, pardon my French, we shoot the shit of it, you know? So, yes. So, so you guys do design and production as well? Like of any items or? So I don't know. What I do is when I get stuff produced, so prints, for example, <coughs> local printers, it's another area of expertise, so when I get post you screen printed, for example, I go to screen, print, screen, screen printing professionals, same thing, um, my caps were coming from Oregon, the state of Oregon, there's a company that I'm using, but the t-shirts we printed here locally, and I'm getting notebooks made, same thing, a lot of it is designed and printed, designed and made, except for the caps right now, everything is designed